1990, I decided that I wanted to be less of a surf bum with an art habit and more of an artist with surf habit. Um, so I really was trying to find a community that this I could do this in, that had a school, that had an art scene, that had everything that I was looking for. And I thought, New York City sounds perfect. I visited a friend in New York City and he had the tiniest apartment I've ever seen. And it, there was three blizzards that year. So I was like, maybe not New York. And my grandparents lived in, uh, in Florida and I knew about Sarasota. I knew the museum, I knew the beaches, I knew that there was a very art-centric history with architecture and the circus and everything else. And I came and visited and I loved the town. So I packed my wares, I drove to Sarasota and I showed up at the art school without applying with 10 sketchbooks and one painting and said, I'm going here. <laughs> and they said, classes start tomorrow. Can you do it? And I was like, yes, I'm going here now. So now I'm in art school in sunny Florida. And I thought to myself, I have to immerse myself completely in this. So I dove right in. I tried every kind of discipline, every kind of artwork, every kind of studio practice, every professor that would let me talk his ear off, I did it. And I got into it. Um, so at this time, I just decided that I needed to now focus. What did I want to be? What did I want to, what did I want to say? And what did I want to do? And I decided that painting was the hardest thing that I had tried, so I was going to be that. <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. So with a professor's help, I decided to like not only just be the best student, but I wanted to be part of the arts community at large. So I took jobs with every artist that I could find in town. And that means mostly that I became the best studio floor sweeper in, in Sarasota. But I learned a lot of practice as how an artist lives in the community, how it re interacts with the world, how they wake up every morning and make something that they think is beautiful and present it to the world. So that's what I did. I graduated and I just dove right into my own studio and I just kept making as much stuff as I possibly could. I just kept making art, kept making art, kept making art. So now what's the next thing? Like how do you get from a guy in your garage making things that I think are beautiful and get them out to the world? So I started diving into the art scene in Sarasota, going to all the gallery shows, going to the museums, meeting other artists and interacting with them and finding out that there really wasn't a uh, voice um, for my generation and emerging artists in Sarasota. So I s just started working more on my voice and how to get it out there. And so meeting a lot of people in the art scene, um, I, we just really started to come together and decide that it was really not what we needed. And right around this time, I was approached by the new curator of the Ringley Museum and they asked me to come and work for them and we redid the entire collection. So now I'm like in uh, a world-class art museum that I had loved for my entire life and now I'm actually holding all these master works. We took it all down and reimagined the whole place. And this really taught me about how the public interacts with artwork and how they view artwork and how they come to to look at it and to interact with it, not only from an education standpoint, but just from a visceral standpoint, like people have real relationships with these objects. So we reinvented the, the interior of the museum and not only just where the pictures went, but how the crowds interacted with it, how students interacted with it, how they learned about art, how they learned about beauty, how they learned about the place and the history and the town. And I did this for around 10 years and I traveled the world with some of these paintings and interacted with more um, artists in more museums. And then I just decided that I had been, I'd done that and I'd done as much of it as I could. So I needed to kind of do my own thing and the way that I figured out how to do that was I just got a dilapidated building that was an old grocery store and I opened my own shop. I started, it was half studio, half gallery. Anybody that was making art at the time was welcome and we just put on shows. It was very little rascals. You got a blanket, you've got some wine, you've got some art, let's put on a show. <laughs> so we did a lot of that and we got a lot of attention for it. And a lot of artists came out of the woodwork and we did a lot of stuff together. At this time, talking to another few of these artists that I was working with, we really came up with the idea that collaboration was really the high tide that will float all of our boats. 
So we got together on a series of cocktail napkins in a bar, as you do, and we designed a group called SRQ based on our airport code. And it was a collective of artists that we would show our own shows, we would represent ourselves, but we would take it out into the community. We would show at botanical gardens, an empty building, a science museum, anybody that would have us, we would show up and we would hang art and do a party and do art happenings. And it was, um, it was a very good time and I just, during that whole time, I just kept honing my own voice and my materials, how I interact with my own art. But it was about my art, making art as a solo act, but it really, you have to realize that there's the next step is how does it interact with the community and how do people come to know it? So I just kept doing that and I think that the town really embraced this. Now that little art center that we started basically the whole neighborhood kind of grew up around us. There's a coffee shop, and then there's another gallery, then there's more artists moving into the area. So the whole part of town that was, you didn't want to go there after dark, is now an arts district. And you know, the, the, with more galleries than we know, not exactly what to do with, but we have a lot of things going on and it keeps continuing to grow. So I think that the important thing to take away from this is as an artist, you need to be part of a community, and then the community needs to embrace the artist as well, because the artist is really your voice. Art is something that we look back upon. So like in your, in your community, you really should reach out and like introduce yourself to your artist, go to the art shows, buy some of their wares. Um, I think that the thing is, is that we have to live with the art that is made, and then we also have to realize that art is the lens that history is really looked at. Our, hist our own history is looked at by our, our, the objects of art that are made. And it shows that we all live together and that we really like the place that we are at and the people that we want to do it with. Thank you.